Hello and welcome to another pocket page process video. Today I'm going to be scrapbooking a little side trip that we took from the resort. We didn't really do any big excursions, but there's a shopping center that is about a five minute drive from the resort. And so we went out to that just to get away from the resort and see a little bit of the landscape and uh, take a little car ride. My daughter was sick when we were there. She had mono. Um, so her energy levels were very low. So we didn't do any kind of exciting <laughs> excursions. We were, to be honest, just happy to rest and relax anyway. So it was kind of nice to have a reason to stay close to home and just kind of chill out and relax. So I have all of my photos. As you can see, I have little categories of photos that are piled up. And uh, that's just my way of doing this project a little bit at a time instead of having it feel so overwhelming. At the very, very beginning, if you watched all of these videos, you can go back and see the very first one uh, called Arrivals. In that one, I sorted all of my photos into categories for stories that I want to tell. And this one is coming up today. So because this one involved a bit of transportation that some of the other pages didn't involve, I pulled out my travel supplies. So for the other pages, I had been using mostly pool and beach supplies. I'm going to add a freeze frame here that just shows behind the scenes. This is how I have my supplies set up in these bins. One of them has my travel supplies and one of them has my beach and pool supplies. And then I have my more generic supplies in that little bin over there to the side. Just wanted to show you a little bit about how I have my space set up to support me telling these stories. So I'm mindful of the fact that my last page that I scrapped in this project was a half page. So I would really like for this page to be another half, to be, you know, the other half of that. But I have a lot of photos here. So what I'm deciding is to add all of these four by six car photos that my husband took and just add them in a little insert and that will free up some real estate and hopefully the rest of the story that I want to tell will be able to be told on the left side of this page, which will actually be the right side of the page that it goes in because I already have my pool layout that should be the last thing on my channel, the last uh, process page on my channel uh, that will be on the left side, as you can see. So I'm kind of setting it up now. I'm just rearranging these because I want this, this will be the front and so the front of the insert and I would like there to be a space on the front for me to put a little title uh, about what this half of the page is going to be about. So I have this photo here that is printed with the bands on it and it's also bigger than I need. I have another photo, the one with Scott uh, prominently featured in it of us in the car. So I don't really need two big photos of us in the car. This is one that I took. And so I'm just printing that up at a smaller size and uh, that will allow me, that's what I'm going to do here with my keyboard. And uh, that will allow me to print, I'm printing it up at two by three inches, which will allow me to fit it on a three by four card. And I'm thinking I'll probably put it on that outdoor adventures card that you can see there. And so what I did was I reprinted a bunch of the photos in this that are on my table right now. I reprinted them at that two by three inch size and that will allow me to fit them on some smaller cards. I really don't need the photos to be that big at all in order to tell the stories that I want to tell. So that means that I can get rid of some of these photos. I also reprinted that one of us in the old fashioned car and uh, that I printed just to get rid of the band. So I chose fill the photo instead of fit. So those ones with the bands were printed at fit. And I thought I knew what I was doing, but I didn't. I was, <laughs> I just made a really big costly mistake when I was printing because I ended up printing a whole bunch, like a hundred photos with those bands on them that I didn't mean to. Anyhow, um, lessons learned, right? I, it only took me 11 years to learn that lesson. <laughs> it's nice that we're always learning in this hobby. Okay, so I have, now I have some smaller photos to work with, which makes telling this story on a single page a lot easier. 
I want to include some pictures of the car. I have a story to tell just about the fact that it's an old Ford car and that's our, that's Scott's family name. And uh, so I've got a little joke to tell about that. It's a joke that has been told many times in our family, but we keep telling it anyways. And uh, then I also have a story to tell about the building itself, which we have passed by multiple times. This is our third time going to this resort. And each time that we go, we pass by it multiple times on the way there and back and on any excursions that we take. And yet we never noticed until this time that the, bu that the building very obviously is shaped like a bird. <laughs> and so I have a story to tell about that. And I'm also just reprinting photos so that the bands are not on them anymore. And uh, what I decided to do was to actually uh, not reprint those photos with the bands on it because I liked the width, like in order to blow it up so that it fills a four by six, I would have had to have cut too much off of the left and the right sides of it. And I didn't want to do it with those two photos because that's the, those are the photos that are about the building. So I want to include as much of that building as possible. So as you can see, I have this, the spread is looking pretty good. I think it's going to fit on the half page plus the insert with the cars. And so I'm looking at my travel themed supplies right now, which I have in one of those iris containers beside me on the floor. So I pulled up some travel supplies here that I think are going to work. I'm, I'm looking at the fact that there's this really beautiful turquoise blue that shows up in the car and also in Scott's mask and shirt. And also we've got really nice pops of red with the cars, which is going to pull into the pool page that's on the other side. So I'm liking how this is looking so far because that pool page featured that bright reddish, It's I'm calling it a raspberry red. So I'm looking through some Vicky Booten supplies there, some of those die cuts from the Wander, I think it was called the Wander Collection. I don't know what it was called actually. And uh, so I also have the chipboard from that same collection. It's a travel themed Vicky Booten collection. And I'm pulling out some stickers that feel kind of relevant and just sticking them on another sticker sheet so that I can access them more easily. I don't wanna forget about them basically. And so I'm heading over to my my supplies here in my room just to grab some cardstock. I keep my cardstock in one of these cupboards. And as you can see, I store them vertically. I have a scrap room tour that shows this in some detail. And I'm just pulling out, I, I pulled out a couple of turquoise, the yellow, and yeah, like a teal type of color. And I brought those over to my desk because what I'd like to do is take these photos here on the left hand side of this page and make them all be backed on the same color of cardstock so that they make a cohesive group on my page. And this is something that I do sometimes just to block off different parts of a, po of a pocket page to pull them all together and either to make them all look like they belong together as part of the same story, but also sometimes to separate them from other parts of the page. So uh, I'm going, here I am just kind of cutting these down. I am leaving a very narrow white border on the edges of these photos. I'm just cutting off the white and that way these, these photos will look like they kind of go together. They're both treated the same way. So they're going to look like they match and coordinate. And so with that piece of paper, I just cut it in half into a six by 12 strip, and then I cut it down into two four by sixes and two three by fours. And that's going to give me this nice pulled together look here on the side. And then the rest of the page will have the same mishmash kind of look that my that my project life spreads always have. I really like this embellishment here. So I'm thinking I'm going to put it on the outside of the page protector on this car. It says small adventure. And that's, you know, what it was. We were literally only gone for about two hours. And uh, it was just the perfect excursion for poor Sophie. <laughs> she was very tired afterwards, but not too tired. Like it didn't, she didn't have to recover or anything. We just, you know, spent the spent the rest of the day at the beach, which is what we would have done anyways. 
So I want this photo of us in the car, the smaller photo of us in the car, I want it to fit on this outdoor adventures card, but I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's another phrase there that says, please plus thank you. And I wanted to include that writing. So I just trimmed down my photo just a little bit so that it would fit there. So now I'm gonna work on the other side of this of this layout and uh, add this photo right here. It's covering up the phrase, which didn't make as much sense. Uh, this is an old, I think it's an October afternoon cut apart. It could be from a different brand, but it has that real October afternoon look to it. Of It's like an old fashioned car with a bunch of luggage piled on top of it. I added a little sticker there that says hitting the road. I thought that was pretty cute. And the reason I'm including that photo is it's a close up of the make and year of the car. It was a classic car Ford 1929. So it's not really the make, but it's like a little logo on the car. And uh, all of the taxis that you get in Cuba, almost all of them are old fashioned cars because they don't have as easy access to new cars as the rest of the world has. And so they tend to fix up old cars. They can get parts for cars more easily than they can get new cars. So they tend to fix up old ones. There are some new cars in on the island as well, but not, not too many. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to spell out my age old pun, old and then dash and then Ford. And I'm using these Kelly Perky pink letter stickers. At first, I was just going to spell out old Ford. And then I thought, no, look, we're going to make it more obvious than that. Here's where I'm deciding to move over the Ford and leave a little gap. And then I'll just have to cut a little piece of a letter that I don't think I'll use in order to make the little dash between old and Ford. I'll take this one, put the little dash in there. And then I'm thinking I might actually want to put little quotes around it. So there are either quotes or commas or hyphens or whatever. So I just put those around the outside of the word. And now there is a gap in that space in front of the car that I might put an embellishment on, but for now, I'm just leaving it at that. So trying to think of what I might want to do with the rest of this page. I've got so many embellishments. Sometimes it's difficult to work with more supplies because it's all pretty and I want it all on the page but I don't want to clutter things. So I'm thinking I'll use this let's go tab and use it as a tab on my insert here. So let's put it right there. And it is sticky, but I'm going to use my stapler just to reinforce it. It's not, as you know, stickers often will not stick very well to plastic. So just stapled it and I stapled it carefully so that it wasn't going to get in the way of me taking out the photo in case I wanted to do some more embellishing on the other side of that. Now I'm using score tape here to glue my embellishment, my little piece of, it's a cardstock die cut from Vicki Booten. And that is because score tape is super, super sticky and it will stick better to the plastic than regular tape runner would. So now I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this empty space on the flip side of the insert. And so I do have this paper already out. So I just cut another four by six piece from that. And that's what I'm going to use as my title. And meanwhile, why don't we get these cards done? I'm still thinking on what I might want to do for the title. So these little cards will be easier. I do tend to scrap the easiest things first and leave the harder things for later. And that's not necessarily the most easiest in terms of like, it doesn't take much time to do it. 
but more just like the ideas that I already have formulated is what I tend to scrapbook first so that I don't forget those ideas, but also it kind of gets your flow going so that you're kind of feeling more into the groove. And then if there's something that you were undecided on after you've done the things that you're more decided on, I find anyways that it's easier for me to then commit to a different idea. So in this case, for example, all that I had to do was just attach those photos. I knew I wanted one on the t one towards the top and one towards the bottom to have like a bit of a checkerboard look with the journaling and the photos. And I just did that and that was enough for me to say, okay, I'm ready to move on and do the little title piece now. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to layer some label stickers. Basically, as I said, there's lots of beautiful and really well-themed pieces on these sticker sheets. And these are by October afternoon. And uh, it's really nice to get some October afternoon onto a page, I have to say. I love their stuff. I wish that they were still around. And... Uh, yeah, it feels good to use their supplies. It's a little nostalgic, to be honest. So as you can see, I layered that large um, speech bubble with two smaller labels. One says, a follow your heart. It does have a bicycle on it instead of a car, but that's okay. The other one says, travel the world. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually looking up the spelling of the name of the place. I couldn't really remember actually which place it, it was technically part of because there's a couple of different areas that are close together. And when we travel, we usually take a couple of at least one day trip out to the city to visit some friends and see some sites. Uh, and so I was just mixed up about which place was which. It is Ciego de Vila is the name of the place and so I looked it up on my photo under information there's always a little pin that shows you where the photo was taken as long as you have locations on on your phone so I'm just having a look at what other things I have at my hands here for being able to you know add some other embellishments these are a little have a little bit of a different feel to them they're not quite as vintage and they're a little bit more cutesy they're Bella Boulevard. And I'm just going to really mess around with this and, and try to get it looking the way that I want it to look. I don't have a vision in mind about what I want it to look like. And that's kind of part of the problem is that I, I'm, I just want a bunch of stickers here, but I don't know exactly how to pull that off. So I have this one that says my big adventure with this with the arrow, the yellow arrow. And I have one with a car that I would like to use because it has the car, but and it's a vintage car, but it's not really working there. So I'm gonna try this one. Love to travel. And so yeah, I'm just trying to layer a whole bunch of stickers together. I'm not really loving how it looks. Luckily, these stickers are really only lightly sticky, so I'm able to pick them up when I change my mind. So I like that one better. It says explore. And I feel like I want something over on the left side, but those that circular circular sticker was just too big. I want something maybe smaller, maybe some enamel dots or some puffy stickers or something. So now that I have enough over to the side there, I'm going to move on to the spelling out the title phase. I have these Hip Kit Club stickers. Boy, I miss the Hip Kit Club. I think I need to resubscribe. I love these puffy stickers that they include in their kits. They're so nice. So I do have the word spelled out on a piece of paper so that I don't get it spelled wrong. And also there's an accent that I wanna make sure I get right as well. So I'm using my thicker alignment tool to place those straight and properly. And I would like these words to be nested among themselves. So I wanna find a little home for the word day and uh, it's not lining up exactly where I want it to be, but that's the best place that I can find for it to go. So I have the, the little A sender in the D is kind of nestled in between the C and the I.
And then I'll just spell out the word Avila in the same way using my thicker alignment tool. I really like that thicker alignment tool, but any really thin ruler will do fine. will take its place if you, if you don't have it or can't find it. And I added a little, there's all these little weird leftovers on these stickers. They're like the little centers of the circular, like of the A's and the G's and whatnot. So I just picked one of those to use as an accent. And I do like how that word is nestled in itself. It, then I added a little chipboard that says, let's shop, because that's where we went to, is a little shopping center. And it's a tourist shopping center. It wasn't like a proper, they didn't sell like food and stuff, just, uh, just souvenirs. So I was gonna decorate this with hearts from that same sticker set, but then I remembered there's this other sticker set that has different colored hearts instead of just the same color. So I thought that that would brighten up this page quite a bit. And that allows me to put some stuff over on the left-hand side of this card as I wanted. I really wanted the little circular sticker there, but it was too big. And I decided to go ahead and just add a row of different colored hearts here just to add a little bit more texture. Because these are puffy stickers, they do add some texture. They're a matte puffy sticker, so they're not shiny, but they have their own kind of plasticky kind of texture to them, which is quite nice. They add detail to the card. And that's done. I like how that looks. I, you know, I thought about doing some outlining on it. I almost always add outlining to everything, but I just decided not to just to even, you know, when you do something all the time, then when you don't do it, that adds emphasis, right? So usually I add outlining to emphasize something, but with this one, I just left it. When I took this photo, I composed it, and I did this a lot with the photos that I took on this trip, but I composed it with this blank space in front of the, in, in, in the foreground, so that I could do some journaling here. So I'm going to add some lines, and my lines are all the same length, but what I plan to do is actually lengthen them so that this makes basically triangular or trapezoidal um, type of journaling lines. My journaling here says, I can't believe that after passing this building so many times, we never noticed it looks like a giant bird. And it's really obvious when you look at it, like there's even, I'm not sure if you can see, but if you look at the very edges of the building, they look like feathers. So now I do have a gap here and sometimes I just say something like so much fun or so silly or something like that. But I'm going to look through my little stamps that I keep in the drawer beside me and I'm going to try to find something that I can put here. And I'm gonna go with this little star stamp. And I'm gonna put five little stars as if it's like a five star rating for the shopping center. It was like an open market type of feel on the bottom part of it, but then there were these staircases that led to the upper levels that had, like the upper level had a cigar shop and I think a liquor store or something and a trap, like a business office of some sort. There were a lot of locals hanging around, but they, I don't think it's a place that locals would shop. It doesn't have the kind of things that I don't think locals would want or need. Um, but anyhow, so I'm just looking at doing some little decorating here. So I took this, this is a wood veneer star. It's an open star and I really love these. The reason I don't keep these with my wood veneers is that they're already pre-painted a really nice smooth white paint and uh, they, they kind of have a different feel to them than wood veneer because of that. And so I keep them in with my acrylic embellishments because they have a similar feel. This is a flare badge, and I really haven't kept many of my flare badges. I got rid of a whole lot of them. This one, I don't even know who made it, but it has a bit of foam underneath of it already, and it's squared, like a rounded, a rounded rectangle, 
and that's part of why I kept it is that it's a really unique flare badge so I've been waiting for the right time to use it so here I am using it. <laughs> I just wanted to spread those photos out a little bit so that they look even more kind of like that checkerboard board look when they sit together I mean so that it'll be like one on the top and one on the bottom and then I'll do the journaling on the opposite pieces just added a little sticker there that says adventure it just adds a bit of interest to the flare badge now I am going to be adding this flare badge right to the card after I add some journaling lines and that is something that I'm going to regret so I put it inside of the pocket but in a subsequent page when I'm adding the next page behind it I realized that that pocket is too crammed to, and the next card behind it is not gonna sit properly because of it. So when I do that, I will actually take it out and put it, glue it to the outside of the page protector. So you just wanna be careful when you're adding anything bulky to your pocket pages that you're not putting too much pressure on the pocket that it's not gonna split or cause um, buckling on the card that's below. As you can see, I just added some pencil lines to show where the, that flare badge was going to be so that I didn't add my journaling lines in the wrong places. And the journaling there just says, a walk under a wing led us to the bathroom and a playground where Cuban teens were playing gleefully. And that was true, like they were literally gleeful playing on this playground. It was really nice to see young people so happy and having so much fun. They were probably 16, 17, 18 year olds and they were swinging and pushing each other on the swing and playing on the slide. It was quite nice. So here's a picture of the parking lot and uh, you know it's not that nice of a picture but it does show all of those cars all parked together the way that they were and so I thought that that was a good atmosphere shot to show you know what it really looked like instead of just the nice glamour shots of each of the cars up close. So I added a October afternoon round sticker there that says snapshot and I added another one that says taxi and another one that said the weather was and I just ticked off that it was kind of cloudy and sunny. I'm adding another one of those little puffy hearts in the center of the camera. I really love putting hearts or stars in the lens of a camera. And now I'm going to add some journaling lines here. And my journaling here says the parking lot had a few old cars parked. Some brought tourists to the shopping center. There actually weren't that many tourists there. There were probably more Cubans than tourists. There were us and a, and a couple of other families. <clears throat> and there were a lot of Cuban people either working there or just kind of hanging around. Which is nice. So I don't often show this part, but the camera was still rolling, so I thought I'd just leave this footage in, especially since this is a bit of a shorter video for me. Uh, but I will just slip all of these cards into their pockets, which is always a very satisfying part of pocket scrapping, is that you get to put it all together and see how it looks in the overall book and how it flows with the pages before it. So as you can see, that pool days spread on the left hand side works really well it kind of the the red in the pool days picks up on the red in the cars on the flip side and then the other side has a nice kind of solid feel to it where it's all the blues and I think it's pretty clear that all of those photos go together from the road trip and stay tuned for what comes next on those last pages. Just a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen. So a great big thanks to them. And also thanks to you for watching all the way to the end. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Until next time, have a really great scrappy week.